Hello everybody, today I want to discuss switch mode converters. They are also called voltage source converters, typically used for state-of-the-art HUDC transmission. For a better understanding I use a single instead of three-phase converter. One converter is placed on each side of a transmission line or of a cable. A converter converting power from AC to DC is a rectifier and one converting from DC back to AC is an inverter. This video will explain the basic principle of such converters and how they interact in HVDC transmission systems. Note that switch mode converters can work in both directions, in rectifier as well as in inverter mode. There are three basic families of converters. Diode converters work as rectifiers only, thyristor converters and voltage source converters or switch mode converters can be operated as controlled rectifiers or controlled inverters. Thyristor converters have been explained in great details in the video about conventional HVDC. The diode rectifier DC output voltage is typically equal or less than the peak of the AC side voltage. A thyristor rectifier enables controlling the DC voltage by varying the firing angle of the thyristor in reference to the AC voltage. The later in the half cycle of the AC voltage the thyristor is fired, the lower the DC voltage will be. The switch mode converter is fundamentally different. For example, here you can see that the DC voltage is much higher than the peak of the AC voltage. The current, the green curve, is hashed at the higher frequency. Here are a couple of differences between the conventional thyristor converters and SVC converters. First, a thyristor inverter can work with a strong AC side only, otherwise the commutation between one leg of the bridge and the other leg does not work. The commutation is needed because one leg is fired whilst the other leg is still conducting. Thyristors interrupt current only when it passes zero. Thus, an AC source is needed for commutation. In contrast, VSCs are based on IGBTs. These are transistors which can be switched on and off. The resistance of the IGBT can be switched from very low to very high in an instant. Thus, an external AC source for commutation is not needed. Second, the thyristor converter works as a current source. Current always has to flow in the same direction. To change the direction of the power flow, the polarity of the transmission line on the DC side has to be changed. Some high voltage equipment, however, may be sensitive to these DC polarity changes. VSCs on the other side control the direction of the current on the DC side. So the power flow direction can be controlled without changing the polarity on the DC side. This results in a more flexible solution. Here a summary of the main differences. The switches of thyristors converters are thyristors of course. For VSCs we need IGBTs. These switches are high power transistors, I mean controlled resistances. These ones can interrupt the current. VSC can drive passive loads. The benefit for HVDC is that you can perform black starts. The drawback, VSCs have slightly higher losses because of the IGBT switches. Therefore, for long distance bulk DC transmission, the conventional thyristor technology is still preferred. Now to more details. The four IGBTs in the converters bridge are controlled by the pulse width modulator at the bottom left of the circuit. The pulse width modulation control consists of a sinus signal. Its amplitude is compared to a higher frequency triangular signal. When the sinus signal is lower than the triangle, the output of the comparator switches to 1, otherwise it stays 0. This control signal will then be connected to the IGBTs as follows. I set up the converter, the DC high voltage source is on the left side. First there is only one leg of IGBTs connected. The result is a series of positive voltage pulses only arriving to the resistive load to the right. Now I add the second converter leg but with inverse polarity connection to the DC source. The controller to the bottom is extended by an inverted signal, so with the top part of the controller is on, the bottom part is off, and vice versa. As a result, one of the two legs of the inverter is always on, whilst the other one is off, according to the pulse width signal. 
Once the output reactor is optimized, a nice sinusoidal voltage output is generated across the resistive load. The output voltage of the inverter follows the sinus 50 Hz control signal serving as input to the comparator. In a real inverter, additional filters would damp the high frequency harmonics. There is an alternative to pulse width modulation, namely current regulated modulation. In this case, the output current of the inverter is controlled by means of a tolerance band control. Thus, the output current of the inverter follows the current reference signal within a defined tolerance band. Here is a model of such a control, where a feedback loop with the output current is compared to a reference current signal. In this example, the current signal stays at 10 amps, as set by the reference, despite of a varying output load. By the way, from now on, I will use the standard representation of converter legs instead of the one used before with crossover connections from the IGBTs to the load. In case of the bipolar switching arrangement, the IGBTs are switched pairwise synchronously so that the AC side output oscillates between positive and negative polarity of the DC source as dictated by the controller output signal. If there is no time lag between the switching instance of the two legs, I can remove the anti-parallel diode without getting over voltage. I do so to accelerate the simulation. Next comes a demonstration of how the power flow can be controlled by a converter. But before that, here is a short recapitulation of how the power flow is controlled between two conventional AC sources separated by a line or by an inductance. The power flow is controlled by means of a shift of the phase angle between the two sources. The phase angle is a function of the torque applied to the generators. This has been explained in great details, for example, in the video about power flow analysis. The red curves trace the power of the sources. On the positive side, the source consumes real power. On the negative side, it supplies power. Let us return to the converter with the DC source. It is operating in inverter mode and feeds a load resistance. You can see how the phase shift of the reference AC source controls the phase angle of the output voltage of the resistor. The AC reference signal of the controller at the bottom left is normally around 1 volt. For illustration purposes, however, it has been increased to 10 kV so that it has the same resolution as the load voltage and is visible, therefore. Now let us replace the passive load resistance by a grid connection represented by a voltage source, an AC source. Now, a phase shift of the control signal versus the load source results in a power flow amplitude and direction change in the load source. In negative terrain, the power flows from the AC source to the DC side and vice versa. The behavior thus is exactly the same as with two conventional AC sources demonstrated ago. A leading angle of the converter output versus the load source results in a re real power flow from the converter to the load source and vi vice versa. Instead of shifting the phase angle at the control sinus signal, I get the same result when I shift the phase angle at the source at the load side. With the leading angle at the load, I pump power from the load source to the DC side, thus the source acts as a generator. With a lagging angle, the power flows from the DC side to the AC side and the source acts as a motor. For the sake of simplicity, from now on, I use an integrated pulse width modulation controller. The reference signal, in this case a 50 Hz sinus 1 volt trace, is connected to the controller which converts the reference to a pulse width modulator, connected to the switches as before. The result is the same as before, I can control the power flow by changing the phase angle of the load source. Again, the red curve is the power of the AC source, the blue trace is the voltage of the source with variable phase angle in relation to the 1 volt controller source at the bottom left, not shown this time due to the large difference in resolution. Here is the first application of a controller with a feedback loop. A core prerequisite to automatically control the power flow of a converter is to control the voltage on the DC side of the converter. In this example, the initial voltage on the DC side without load is set to 1.5 per unit, which here is 15 kV. Connecting a resistor to the DC side increases the power consumption on the DC side. As a result, the DC voltage drops. The DC voltage should always be higher than the mean square root of the AC voltage. 
a feedback loop to the sensor of the DC voltage is connected to the AC voltage controller with an amplitude of 1 volt and a phase angle shifter set by the difference between the reference and the actual DC. In order to see the voltage input to the pulse width modulator, the signal is amplified by means of a transformer. Here comes a short promo for the simulator I'm using. If you want to quickly and easily build an electric circuit model and interactively play with the elements, this is the place to go. For example, you can change the phase angles of the power sources in real time and watch the resulting changes in the power flow across the grid. There is no better tool to get hands-on expertise in electric circuits. You can access the browser-based tool via link below www.ecsp.ch Back to the topic. The simulation is kicked off without resistive load on the DC side. The blue tray stands for the voltage, the green curve for the current and the red curve for the power, all on the AC side of the converter. The DC voltage is also visible as straight trace on top at 15 kV. The very simple controller tries to keep the DC voltage on target. The red power trace shows that without resistive load on the DC side, the power flow is purely reactive. When I connect the resistive DC load, the DC voltage drops. The drop is then slowly corrected by an automatic adaptation of the phase shift on the AC side of the converter, enabling real power to flow from the AC to the DC side. In reality, the control circuit would be more sophisticated and the reaction time to counter deviation of the DC voltage would be shorter. Again, this lesson shall be kept simple and easy to understand. The layout of this circuit is extremely basic from both the controller's and the converter's point of view. In reality, controls and converter's layouts can be much more sophisticated, but this one is good enough to understand the basic principles. However, instead of the pulse width modulation scheme, it is more efficient to use the alternative current regulated modulation or so-called tolerance band control algorithm for controlling the DC side of the converter. The scheme is adapted accordingly. Still, the feedback from the DC voltage is used and the difference between the reference DC voltage and the actual DC voltage stands for the current to be fed into the AC source. This DC current is then synchronized or in other words multiplied with the AC voltage of the AC source. The feedback from the AC voltage should be unity, thus the voltage sensor ratio on the AC side must be adjusted accordingly. By doing so, the reference for the AC current is always real and that's the important point. Thus, real power flows from the DC to the AC side of the converter. The AC current feedback controls the amplitude of the sinusoidal current and thus the real power evacuated or accumulated on the DC side is compensated by the power flowing to, to or from the AC side. In case you use the simulator, you should think through the scheme and make sure that the voltage and current signs of the sensors are set properly. Here comes the result. Without DC load, the power exchange between the AC source and the DC source is minimal. The current represented by the green curve jumps between the limits of the tolerance band around zero. Both the current and the power looks larger, but it is due to, to the automatic optimization of the scale of the traces on the screen. Adding a DC load by closing the breaker on the DC side shows how quickly the current and the power of the AC side adapts to the changing power requirement on the DC side. Bringing it all together. A voltage source HVDC connection consists of two converters at each end of the line. In this example, the converter of the right side is controlled by a very simple pulse width controller with a fixed frequency and fixed, fixed angle setting. In case of a variable speed drive, the frequency could be set variable. This converter controls the power flow on the right side automatically by means of the phase angle difference between the AC source on the right side and the AC side of the right side converter. Pushing power from the AC to the DC side on the right side will increase the voltage on the DC side and pulling power from the DC side to the AC side will reduce the voltage of the DC side. Assuming a grid connection, 
A lack of power in the grid on the right side will slow down the frequency and thus increase the phase angle. As a result, power will automatically flow from the DC side to the AC grid on the right side. The converter on the left side is controlled by means of a current modulator explained in details previously. The current modulation controls the DC voltage and compares it to the reference. A smaller DC voltage compared to the reference will immediately be compensated by a power flow from the left AC grid to the DC side and vice versa. Given the static reference signal for the converter to the right, it is only the AC power source on the right side which governs the power flow. Forgetting the sources on both sides of the DC impacting the power flow on equal terms, I can replace the reference signal by a sensor signal connected to the AC source on the left side. As a result, the power flow now depends on the phase angle difference between both AC sources. This is exactly the behavior we have seen earlier between the two conventional AC sources connected by an inductor or a line. It works perfectly well if I add a long line, 200 kilometers in this example, between the converters, a DC connection. The smoothing capacitor has to be equally distributed to both line ends and the result is as before without a line. This is probably the best available online electric circuit simulation program. It's available in two versions. The one version is public and free, the other one is for registered members. The difference you can see here on this list. On the tabs you have uh, news, these are the latest developments of the program, then you have something about me, and here you have a user's guide. In the user's guide you have the table of content, here you can navigate through the individual items, but you can also go to the entire PDF paper, which can be downloaded here. It's available on the internet, here you have a whole description of the program. You can find the software under this link here. It is browser-based, so there is no downloads needed, but I recommend to use a mouse. The software is highly interactive. This is just a small power system for demonstration purpose. So you have various sources and you can vary the power of the sources supplied to the system. You can open and close the transmission line and have a look at the impact it has on the system. So you can train your skills as an operator. Instead of looking at the time domain only, you can also go to the phaser domain. Here you have the single phasers and you can see the impact the phase angle has on the power supply to the system from one specific source. You can open and close lines and have a look at the impact it has on the circuit. On the bottom of the page you have some of the examples which have been explained in the YouTube movies. You can click on it and then you get directly the diagram on the simulator and then you can, can play around with it. It would be a pleasure for me to see you there, especially of course I would welcome you as registered members.